A Silent Voice is a story about forgiveness. It's a story about how we forgive others, but also it's a story about how we forgive ourselves. At some point in our lives, we're going to end up hurting or offending someone, whether it's a major or minor offense, whether that be by accident or purposefully, whether it be through the harmful things we do or the helpful things we fail to do. It's a fact of life that at some point, we will be the source of one's pain. And from doing so, we experience feelings of regret, shame, and guilt, and may be unable to forgive ourselves because of it. A Silent Voice follows a young man's journey to self-forgiveness. As a child, Shoya Ashida bullied his elementary school classmate, Nishimiya Shoko. When the school started taking action, Ashida was then blamed, bullied, and ostracized by his peers for his misdemeanors, and now lives with immense regret and guilt. However, now as young adults, upon a chance meeting with Nishimiya, Ishida was finally able to begin and complete his process of self-forgiveness. So, in this video essay, we will be taking a look at Ishida's journey to self-forgiveness in a silent voice. We will be identifying the steps and examining the overall process to forgiving ourselves in relation to the life of Shoya Ashida. This is A Silent Voice, The Process of Self-Forgiveness. A research article titled, A Therapeutic Model of Self-Forgiveness with Intervention Strategies for Counselors, describes four steps in the process of self-forgiveness. Responsibility, Remorse, Restoration, and Renewal. Using theoretical and empirical literature on the study of forgiveness, the authors, Marilyn Cornish and Nathaniel Wade, developed the four R's of genuine self-forgiveness. We will be using this concept as a reference to understanding Ishida's journey to forgiving himself. One important detail to take note of is that this process of self-forgiveness can be thought of sequentially, but they are also interrelated. What this means is that the process can occur with the completion of one component and moving on to the next. but there's a lot of overlap between each one. So, a lot of what we'll be talking about today are closely related and similar. The first element in the process of self-forgiveness is accepting responsibility for having harmed another. Understandably, it's difficult for us to accept when we've done something wrong. It's in our nature to want to protect our ego and our self-image. During elementary school, Ashida never really understood that his actions hurt Nishimiya, especially since his friends would join and encourage him in the bullying. Along with no immediate punishment from teachers or authority figures, this only served as positive reinforcement for Ashida to believe he wasn't doing anything wrong. And for Ashida's case, taking responsibility was initially never in his interest. When the school finally took action on Nishimiya's mother's concerns, all the blame was placed on Ashida. As a result, he was bullied by his former friends, witness his mother bear physical pain, and other consequences for his troubles. Yet, even through all of that, Ashida continued to place his anger on Nishimiya and believed he was a victim of unjust persecution, despite, well, being the one to cause offenses. <laughs> it's not until Ashida long continued to suffer the consequences where he finally understood and acknowledged that his actions truly hurt Nishimiya. He's able to condemn the wrongful acts of his past and now views Nishimiya as a person, realizing that she has her needs, feelings, and vulnerabilities, all of which he completely ignored when they were children and now had to learn the hard way. Realizing this, Ishida knows that he has to make up for his offenses. The second element in the process of self-forgiveness is expressing remorse while reducing shame. To clarify and put into more detail, emotional reactions following an offense fall into two overarching categories, guilt or remorse, and shame. The feeling of guilt involves tension, remorse, and regret about one's actions. In contrast, in shame, the negative feelings are focused on the self, not on the regretted actions. After one admits their fault for an offense, it's only natural they'll begin to experience and deal with the negative feelings associated with harming another. One may feel guilt or shame from causing someone to suffer, and may possibly despise themselves for allowing the actions and attitudes that led to that person's suffering. 
This time can be uncomfortable and difficult as the offender is forced to connect with the reality of the harm they caused. It's easily visible as to how Ashida is going through feelings of anxiety, regret, and shame. Ashida repaying his mother the money used for Nishimiya's damaged and lost hearing aids is one example of his guilt. The X's placed over everyone's face represents Ashida's anxiety and reluctance to connect and interact with others. When Ashida and everyone else goes to the amusement park, he even doubts whether or not he has the right to have fun and to be enjoying himself. <laughs> Thus, he tends to doubt and downplay himself, believing that it's right to do so because of all the offenses he caused. However, Ashida's feelings of shame are self-destructive and don't help with conciliatory behaviors. One simply won't be able to self-forgive if they won't allow themselves the chance to change and the chance to see themselves in a positive light once again. Thus, it's important for Ashida to reduce his self-criticizing and self-contemptuous mindset and instead, focus on his transgressions and the effects it had on others. Much of the movie's runtime displays Ashida's feelings of shame slowly fading away. We already know about Ashida's expression of remorse against his past offenses, so it was only natural that Ashida was ready to offer apologies and make amends after encountering Nishimiya once again. And thereafterwards, in meeting new people, reconnecting with old friends, creating eventful memories, all of these events culminated into Ashida finally realizing one of the most important lessons of self-forgiveness. <laughs> The third element in the process of self-forgiveness is engaging in restoration through reparative behaviors and a recommitment to values. When Ashida meets Nishimiya once again, he immediately and continuously tries to make amends for all the wrongs he committed. The learning of sign language to communicate, giving back the notebook he stole and damaged, as well as asking if she would like to be friends in the same exact way that she asked him before. Pretty much, Ashida's goal becomes giving Nishimiya back the happiness he took away from her in elementary school, as well as creating new, enjoyable memories. Also important to the act of making amends, Ashida is able to make amends with Nishimiya's family, who indirectly suffered from his offenses. It's clear that both Yuzuru and Yaiko harbored an intense disliking for Ashida, with Yuzuru stopping Ashida's attempts to reconnect with Nishimiya, as well as being the cause for his school suspension and Yaiko slapping him and being visibly angry at his presence during her birthday. But we see how Yuzuru slowly warms up to Ishida with the times he's been able to help and support her, along with Yuzuru understanding Ishida's true feelings about the offenses that he's caused. For Yaiko, she was at least able to accept Ishida being at their house during her birthday and tagging along with them at the fireworks show. Most likely, after Ishida saved Nishimiya, her opinion of him changed greatly. This process also involves addressing the victim and offering a direct apology. Interestingly enough, Ishida doesn't directly apologize for his past misdemeanors until the near end of the film, but it was obvious through his actions and behaviors that he wanted to make amends and contribute to Nishimiya's life. Because of those efforts, we for sure know that Ishida's apology was fully sincere and genuine. Nishimiya -san. The latter half of the process includes a recommitment to values, the personal values that they violated from their offense. Most definitely, Ashida was able to address the attitudes and behavioral patterns that contributed to his offenses against Nishimiya albeit occurring through the taste of his own medicine. However, this is good progress for Ashida, since all that's now left for him to do is to focus on the present reality. Ashida obviously still has regrets about his past behavior and ruminates on how he could have been a better person. But right when he's able to save Nishimiya from an attempted suicide, with everything he's been through, this is the point where Ashida gains self-compassion and finds a sense of peace for himself. 
where he condemns the misdemeanors he's made in the past while gaining a new resolve and the courage to finally live a true and proper life for himself. The last element in the process of self-forgiveness is achieving a renewal of self-respect, self-compassion, and self-acceptance. Essentially, this is where Ashida reaches internal acceptance of himself. Without necessarily forgetting the wrongdoings that he committed, this is where he can finally forgive and reconcile with himself, especially after all the efforts he's made in addressing his wrongs. Given that Ashida has spent years with the mindset of self-contempt and self-punishment, being able to live with self-respect, self-compassion, and self-acceptance is not going to come without its difficulties. But thankfully, Ashida has friends and family that will accept him, people that will help him live and keep moving forward. And in the end, this is where we have the beautiful scene of a renewed Ashida finally looking up and facing forward at the life before him. This is where Ashida is finally able to, well and truly, forgive himself. Thank mm -hmm. you.